Unit 6 covers the reaction and review paper. So for today's lesson, we will analyze what is a reaction and review paper all about. Sometimes we disagree with the review of a movie or series that we have watched. How can we present our ideas that are contrary to a review or reaction paper? So it is normal for us to make an opinion when it comes to watching a movie or a series or even reading a book. So it is normal for us to give a positive criticism or even a negative criticism. For today's learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. The first one is to read and analyze a reaction paper and a review paper. The second one, you should be able to convincingly raise contra reviews to a reaction or a review paper. For the essential questions that will be answered for the entire discussion is how do we present our contra reviews in an appropriate manner? And the second one, what should our mindset be when reading a reaction or review? Analyzing a reaction paper, it is when you should be familiar with the features and structures of a reaction paper. So you should always remember what these features and structures are all about and what could be their purposes. The first thing you must do when analyzing a reaction paper is to have some knowledge of the source material. So you should have a background knowledge about what is it all about. Knowing the source material will allow you to have a better understanding of what the paper is talking about. It will help you formulate your ideas regarding the reaction paper. The questions you keep in mind when formulating your own reaction paper can be used to analyze another person's perspective or point of view. So what points or aspects when emphasized would make the most sense in the context of the class? So what could be the most important idea that is being shown here? So another one is, how is the work related to any current national or international issues? So is there a connection? Is the topic connected with an issue in our society? So always remember, talking about your personal connection to the work is important when writing a reaction paper. However, when analyzing one, it is best to use this part of a paper only to get an idea on how the author personally feels about the work. So we will focus on the perspective of the author in writing the text. So these are the questions that we need to follow when analyzing a reaction paper. So did it remind you of an experience you had? Or did you remember something, a lesson you learned, or even the emotions that you felt before? Second one is, what are its strengths and weaknesses? So is it complete or is it accurate? So next one is, what could be the lesson or moral at the end of this text? Is it delivered effectively and clearly? And would you recommend this work with other people. So a tip of advice is avoid reading and analyzing a reaction or a review paper with the immediate goal of refuting it in mind. If you read a paper with that mindset, you may become biased and fail to treat the author's points with respect. So to make it short, we should be unbiased in writing a reaction or a review paper towards the author's perspective. In analyzing a review paper, you should always be familiar with the work that a review paper is discussing when you analyze it. And the second one, if the review has a thesis statement or a clear main idea, 
that can be a good starting point for your analysis towards the text. Because a thesis statement represents the main idea in the text. In analyzing a review paper, a review paper will most likely also have its own analysis and interpretation of the work. This is where the bulk of the review paper is where most of your analysis will focus. Analyzing a review paper is similar to preparing to write a reaction or review of your own. In analyzing a review paper, your arguments will mostly come from your own analysis of the work mixed with your opinions on the review writer's analysis. So always take note of how the author defends their thesis statement with their analysis since that is how they develop the thesis and the whole paper. A review paper will most likely have a conclusion where the points and key ideas of the paper will be summarized. So in the conclusion section, your analysis should also focus on the recommendation. Will the author recommend this work to their readers? Let's proceed to raising counter-reviews. Even though your goal is to possibly refute the points of the paper you have analyzed, it is best to still look at the opposing points carefully and without bias. So you are here not to be a biased judge in criticizing the text that is written by the author. This will show understanding and respect on your part, will make your own arguments more credible, and it will also help readers relate to your own points. When it is clear that you took a reaction or review paper's point seriously, your own arguments become more credible. Your readers will know how you formulated these points after carefully considering opposing viewpoints. So, in presenting the counterpoint, you can directly quote or paraphrase the paper with the argument or you can use your own words to offer a rhetorical statement or hypothetical scenario. Whichever way you decide to use, it is important that you do so respectfully, fairly, objectively, accurately, and distinctly. Always use a neutral language to present the argument. Make, make it clear and distinct that you are presenting someone else's viewpoint, but do so fairly and objectively by using the neutral language. Do not use emotionally charged or biased language to present the topic or else you will come off as dismissive. Example number one. You should avoid this sentence. So let us read. Harry finds abstract art unpleasant because his simple mind cannot comprehend complex works of art. What are the negative words that can be shown on this sentence? The word unpleasant and the statement in which simple mind cannot compre comprehend. So therefore, we should um, avoid this because it sounds like negative. So it uses emotionally charged language and it is outright dismissive of the argument already. So instead of using this, you should use this second sentence. Harry is not fond of abstract art because it is, by its very nature, hard to understand at first glance. So it sounds like positive even if Harry is not a fan of abstract art because abstract art is defined as something that is hard to understand at first glance. Compared with this uh, first sentence, this second sentence is better than the first sentence. Always avoid the temptation of using the straw man fallacy when presenting the argument. 
This is when you purposely weaken the opposing argument by overly simplifying it, taking it out of context, or describing it incompletely. Or to make it short, exaggerating the statement. Let's proceed to example number two, which shows Stroman fallacy. So let us read the statement. There are students who cheat in tests because they claim that they just don't have time to study. However, they just need to practice proper time management skills to solve this problem. This oversimplifies the argument and does not show much sympathy or respect. Or it could be offensive in the sight of the teachers. Instead, you can use this as a substitute on the previous statement. Let us read. Students have many responsibilities. They have obligations with family, extracurricular activities, friends, and academic expectations. Especially from teachers who feel their class should be the top priority. Sometimes, Students are forced to cheat because they could not make time to study for a subject in between all of their other responsibilities. However, I think that with the right time management skills, they will be able to find more time to study for their test. Refuting the counterpoint or refuting means you prove that a statement or theory is wrong or false so after you present the argument you are opposing you can pr then proceed to showing readers why they should take your side you should have already convincingly and respectfully presented the opposing views and your next step is to introduce your own counter arguments there are four main parts that should be part of your refutation the first one is introducing the counterpoint. The second one is state your objections to it. The third one is to offer evidence to support your rebuttal. And the fourth one is have a clear conclusion by comparing the two viewpoints head to head. The order of the counterpoint and your objection can be interchangeable depending on your writing style. Present the counterpoint first to immediately establish it while making sure that your objection is more memorable because you are ending with it. Presenting your objection first before the counterpoint immediately puts your reasoning in the minds of your readers. This is more effective for when you have a limited amount of words or time to make your argument. If you are working with multiple counterpoints and multiple objections, you can also present them alternatingly. This shows that you have a solid rebuttal for each point. For the example of a counterpoint statement, let us read. The opposition believes that Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallow should never have been cut into two movies because it messed up the flow of the narrative. So this should be presented as shown above with respect, fairness, and accuracy. Next, the objection can be presented as a question or a statement. It should be the reason the readers do not accept the counterpoint. Make it sound persuasive and not forceful. For example, However, let us consider that books and movies are highly different forms of media. The same scene described in a book might translate different when shown on the big screen. So this statement shows persuading uh, the readers to believe with the perspective of the writer here, and it does not sound as a forceful statement. Then, Support your objection with reliable evidence, expert opinion, and or sound reasoning. So this statement shows a reliable 
evidence. So let us read. For example, in the book, a few chapters focused on Harry, Ron, and Hermione looking for the hollows with almost no success. However, if we were to strictly follow the book word for word, when we move the scene into a movie screen, it can lead to unnecessary scenes and may unintentionally shift the focus of the story. So therefore, this is the more detailed statement in support to the uh, counterpart statement. Finally, conclude it by resolving the conflict. Use the conclusion to state once and for all all why yours is the better point. For example, while strictly following the book by keeping Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows to only one movie would be a more faithful adaptation of the beloved classic, extending it to two movies gave the book justice by focusing on the elements and visual narratives that wrapped up the beloved series well. So, for your activity this morning, each group should find a review of a movie or a TV show you are familiar with online. So, write a short paragraph of your own that presents your ideas contrary to the review. So, this is a group activity, same groupings with the previous activities. So, let's proceed to wrapping up our lesson for today. Analyze a reaction paper by following the same questions used to write one. An analysis of a review paper is done by presenting your understanding of both the source material and the review's own analysis. Present counterpoints respectfully, objectively, accurately and distinctively. Refute counterpoints by presenting the author's ideas, stating your own objections, supporting your objections, and having a clear conclusion. So these are the following sources that supports our lesson for today. If you have any question, feel free to leave a message on the chat box. Thank you so much for listening.